Hello friends, and welcome to Talking Infinity People. My name's Eric, this is Rachel, and by moving the microphone closer, I can ensure that we're more well heard than we might otherwise be. But I also want to not block our view of the things we look at to respond to. So this video is called How to Type People slash how to interpret data because an individual named random person annoyed the living F out of me <coughs> by saying that I had leaving comments on the typing of Grace indicating that she was not an ISTP but something else. And the convoluted explanations for why, it's just, it's like, okay, you are clearly entering into this with a desired conclusion and, and not caring that you're cherry picking shit. You know, it's like you've got your conclusion first and your justifications come after. Your conclusion should emerge from your justifications naturally first, and then you can explain your justifications. It's not something you decide your conclusion first and then come up with justifications. It's ridiculous. Hi, Bendy. Anya, how are you? Hi, Jen Exil. You're not a number, you're a free man. I mean, you're also a number. Your number is six. You're, you're the numeral six, Gen Exil. It's your other name. It's your Christian name. The numeral six. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I was mad at this person. And he was trying to be sort of friendly, I guess. But I just, I said, your reasoning across the board here is garbage. Sorry. And then I felt the need to explain myself. So I started live streaming. The reason I say that is not because any given specific point he's making doesn't have some possible validity to it. I mean, I didn't really read it that carefully, but um, the point being that it's very obvious that he's trying to to impose a certain wrong frame of reference without actually, you know, challenging the frame of reference directly. In other words. I'm going to operate under this wrong frame of reference. I'm going to pretend as though we're talking the same language and I'm not going to discuss which frame of reference ought to have primacy and why, which is the only thing that really matters if you're going to be in disagreement about it, right? So I found it annoyingly disingenuous, but probably he's got no idea that it is, you know? Um, I think he's trying to engage with me honestly, but the bottom line is... He's not ready to engage with me, honestly, about the topic. I, it bugs me when when people come in who have got no fucking idea how to type anybody and start leaving comments explaining how I've mistyped this person or misinterpreted this or that's a clear sign of meow or whatever. Um, it's like... The, one of the reasons we know Grace is an ISTP is that she was definitely any polar. Now, if you don't accept that being any polar... That, that testing any polar on any tests means anything, then there's no point in us for having any conversation. If you accept that that's fairly definitive about limiting the number of types, you know, if I can establish that she's any polar, that she's definitely ISFP or ISTP, then other possibilities can be tossed out the window. So you either agree with the basic frame of reference that we should use those things that are definitive and determinate, like polar tests, or you don't. And if you don't, there's no point in arguing anything beyond that. Because at that point you're saying, there is, I prefer vagary over definitiveness, and I don't agree with your claims that these tests are definitive. So that's where the argument needs to occur, right? But they don't say that. They say instead, they pretend like they can just argue under their frame of reference that we're speaking the same language and it has some sort of impact. And it's, it's like, okay, knock it the fuck off. You know? Yeah. So.
So, happy Father's Day. <laughs> uh, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. I have yet to say happy Father's Day to my father. He's probably going there and do so pretty soon. Hi, Eucalyptus Koala. Um, I don't have any son, but I do have a daughter. And she has a father, and that person is me. So I'm both a father and have a father. So Father's Day is, is a day that's relevant to me, technically, according to the official traditions. Mm -hmm. But like all other holidays, I re given the choice, I'd prefer it and all other holidays not exist, basically. What about Christmas? <sighs> Christmas You're... is cool. No, Christmas is fine. <laughs> I, I I would it, the thing is it's like I wouldn't want to give up Christmas really but I would love to give up all birthdays anniversaries Father's Days Mother's Days mm, mm. Um, any kind of obligation days okay that's fair um can we keep 4th of July 4th of July is pretty fun I like, I like looking yeah, at Yeah, we can keep 4th of July. I mean, we can keep the holidays you just get the day off for no reason. Like, you know, your Veterans Day, your Memorial Day, <laughs> <laughs> your President's Day. Uh, we can keep all of those ones. The ones that you don't have to do anything, right? Yeah, those are your relaxation holidays for sure. Sheila W., your poor husband, has got two obligation days. See, the thing is, even if you're the father on Father's Day, it's still an obligation day because... Like, um, even if I, even if I weren't considering my dad in the equation, I'd have to be prepared to do Father's Day stuff because Delilah would want to do Father's Day stuff, you know? Um, it's also the first day of summer. It is. Yeah. That's why today on the live stream, Rachel and I are going to be going surfing. <laughs> Eric, you said a leaf is only a leaf when blah, blah. But in that case, you're using two different meanings for the word leaf. Um, I don't understand what you mean. If, if you're talking about a logic question, the point of that is that the words no longer mean things. They represent variables that function as objects in a logical system. That's why validity and soundness are different things. Truth gets mushy. Uh, validity is not. Because validity excises meaning from the equation. And TI people instinctively understand that, and non-TI people don't. I'm into solstices and equinoxes. I used to uh, have a vision board that I would change every uh, season. Every but... solstice. Yes. Every like solstice. But now I just changed the light in Eric's car. Each season. <laughs> okay, but the point is, if I'm saying only leaves are potatoes, then I'm saying, I'm defining the word leaf as a subset of the set of things called potatoes. Right? But a leaf is only a leaf when it changes from green to yellow. Right. So, in other words, um, in that case, you have to presume that a leaf, in the first instance, is an instance of a leaf, and a leaf in the second instance is a membership of, of a set. Even though it's the same word, based on how the thing's structured, it suggests to any TI person that you treat them accordingly. That the, well, no, not two different meanings. Not two different meanings, right? Um, we're still talking about leaves. One, we're talking about an instance of it. And one, we're talking about the category name of leaf. So not two different meanings, right? Two different frames of reference. Like if I were to say the leaf of a table, that would be a different meaning of leaf.
regardless, um, let's not get bogged down in the specifics of the TI questions because we need to remember that the purpose of them is to tell us about the person who's answering the questions. <laughs> so it's like, if, if I got that response from somebody, I'd know they were a TI dom. That's what matters. Okay. <laughs> not, not, not whether you're right about it or not, but the fact that you're arguing about it in this fashion is highly suggestive of the fact that you're a TI dom. And that's why I ask those kind of questions because it doesn't matter if I'm, if I'm slightly wrong or half-assing it in some way, I can reliably assume that TI doms will, will be anal about it, right? So it doesn't matter because it's working as, as intended regardless. I just burned you with a torch, metaphorically, Rain. Okay. Or did you burn me? Only time will tell. <laughs> uh. So anyway, Leaves of Grass is a terrible poem. Oh my God, it's so terrible. Why is that so famous? Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. Has anybody here read Leaves of Grass? No. It's fucking terrible. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> there are a lot of a lot of famous canon books are just garbage, you know. It, one of the nice things about about the woke wokeness movement is that you get to you get to read a lot a lot of different kind of voices now, and and stuff that's that's picked by by literature teachers or whatever. Uh, you know, it's like, there was this book that Jeffrey had to read for his class, so I read it, too, you know. Um, that at first, I was very skeptical of, because it positioned itself as a book of stories by, like, people of color, or some shit like that, right? And, uh, and it turned out it was just, there were, it was just fantastic stories. It's like, why, <laughs> why do you have to under, undermine my faith in what you're doing? by pointing to the wrong thing, you know? It's like, if you're actually choosing stories because the people who wrote them are diverse, you're not choosing stories for the right reason, right? You're supposed to be choosing the best stories. Well, this book was full of fantastic stories. So it's like, it really kind of bothered me that they, they tried to convince me ahead of time that they had made decisions on the wrong criteria. <laughs> But uh, regardless, it is nice to, to get to read stories about from all these different sort of cultural perspectives and stuff. It's interesting. At least we get rid of some of the garbage from the canon. Um, like Leaves of Grass or <laughs> Last of the Mohicans by fucking... <laughs> Last of the Mohicans. Have you ever read... Um, well, I mean, the point is, whoever put that anthology together was an excellent picker of great stories. Now, they may have chosen in the process to not include a great story or two that was written by somebody who wasn't... He didn't have a, a funny-sounding last name, basically. <laughs> but, uh... Or was... Uh, or was, didn't self-identify as black. Or the story wasn't about those kind of things. But the point is, even if they excluded some stories because it didn't fit their theme, the key thing to note, if you were going to try to sell me that book, was the person who picked the stories in this book is incredibly kick-ass at picking the best stories. That's what they should have said on the cover of it. Yeah, and then I would have been like, okay, I, I'm interested in reading this book now. If whoever put this together is incredibly good at picking the best stories, then, I, then I'm sure it's full of good stories. But instead, it was just like, oh, fuck. So they chose mediocre stories just because they were written by by people who had the right racial identity or something. Is what I immediately assume when you tell me, oh, it's a diversity book or something, right? 
That's the insult that race does to everybody. It, anybody who self-identifies as any kind of racial group, they just have low self-esteem, I guess. <laughs> Otherwise, why identify with a racial group? Eric, have you ever tried the TE test on a TE DOM? You don't find it very convincing observationally? Um, no, I, I mean, I don't... I don't feel as though I've got a particularly a good test for TE. You've never claimed to have a particularly good test for TE. Um, you can usually tell TE people as much by... No, I don't think it was called Reclaiming Our Stories. I don't remember what it was called. I have a copy of it around here somewhere. But... It's like Poet X or something. No, not that one. It was the short oh. story anthology. Poet X was actually pretty good, too. For being super woke or oh, whatever. Oh, the Poet... I don't remember. But the short story anthology... Anyway, um, no, that was good too, though. <laughs> that was good too. Persephilus was really good. It's a graphic novel about the Iranian Revolution. Yeah. It was pretty kick yeah. ass, I gotta say. It's about this, written by basically like an ENTP chick trying to deal with this um, fundamentalist Muslim rev revolution, having been raised on the principles of Western education for her first like 10 to 12 years, and then all of a sudden these. Fundamentals come in and start telling her she she's got to check herself before she wrecks herself, and she's just like fuck you, <laughs> you know. It's it's pretty fantastic. It's also pretty tragic and horrific too yeah. towards the end in a couple of spots, but uh, but you know that's fine. It's real. I I gotta say it was a hell of a lot better than than the Shakespeare plays we read. Uh, yeah, Macbeth wasn't very good. Eric, I found a good technical word for what cognition functions, cognitive functions do that a Negrum doesn't. Functions partition attention, whereas the Negrum drives don't partition human emotional motivations. Well, I mean, why would you use partition particularly instead of, say, distinguish or taxonomy or... Uh, I mean, the thing is... Oh, I see. Okay, I got you. No, I understand now. Thank you. That is, that's good. You're correct. I like that. That's great. Now that I understand what you're saying, I totally agree with you. You're completely right. That's a good distinction to make there. I never thought about that really in those terms. <sighs> who's who's a guy who's got a pocket full of robust distinctions? Why, it's rain. <laughs> <laughs> and isn't that what everybody wishes for in life, to have a pocket full of robust distinctions? I think so. I think so, too. The thing is, it's like, okay, so... I want to get back to my central point here, which is, let's say you disagree with, with somebody I typed. I either type them because, in large part, I type them what they are because, in large part, um, their polar is definitive, which means they're either ISTP, ISFP, ENTJ, ENFJ, or um, ESFP, ENFP, um, and that's about it, right? So, uh... If they're one of those six types, then I've I've been able to be more definitive about them because I can be more definitive about the location of their polar. If it's not one of those six types, then I have to make some sort of holistic judgment on things because I don't have a polar test that's going to reveal that you're genuinely TE polar. I can't test for that as a skills test in the same way that I can test for um, TI. So if you... I mean, the greatest... The best video for everybody to pay attention to is the ENFP video that I put up recently, the typing session video, right? Because uh, you can see you can see how she's talking, we're communicating, there's no indication of anything wrong with her, and then all of a sudden I ask a TI question, and she has what appears to people who aren't TI polar to be an oddly shocking deficit, right? Like... How could she not know? How could she not be able to answer who is my mother's sister? 
in relation to me? How could she not possibly be able to answer that? So the thing is, a video like that, where, um, where you can you can have a viewer come in and go, okay, yes, I agree. This person seems like some kind of an action type, an any dom or an se dom, based on their talkativeness. And we all agree on that. And I can say, okay, then if that's the case, they're either going to test very strong on TI or they're going to test incredibly, impossibly weak on it. Um, and nothing in between. And it be definitively fall into those sets time and again, right? That's pretty impressive uh, predictive power. That's, that's pretty definitive confirmation that we're on to the right sort of thing, you know? Do I notice if I talk to another ENTP? Not necessarily right away. Sometimes I talk to an ENFP, and I think they're probably an ENTP before I give them a, a TI test. Uh, for example, this guy um, who I used to talk to fairly often, his name was uh, Sauce. Sauce. Sauce is an ENFP who, if you get him and me sit down together, we are riffing up each other, you would swear is two of the same type until you ask a TI question. And then it's blatantly obvious. Uh, Sauce and I could have a conversation back and forth, riffing off of each other, making up a story or something. And everybody here would go, wow, those two guys are exactly alike. Until you ask any TI question or start talking politics at all, in which case the TI polar of Sauce becomes abundantly clear and the TI tool of mine of me becomes abundantly clear. That's pretty powerful stuff, right? Like in terms of being convincing. Um, being convincing that the model's correct. Being convincing that you're onto something real here. If you can identify that somebody's definitely a action type, then they're going to land either meow or meow and nowhere in between. And it, it's reliable. And we've got stacks of data to, to, to verify it. Every time I upload a typing session, it's more data reinforcing the fact that people fall into these kind of slots of um, attentional deficit. I wish I had a better TE test. The ordinality thing is not great, but it's revelatory somewhat about people's comfort with TE. Uh, I think, I think uh, something that's showing a little bit of promise is if you ask uh, a TE backside person, what's the proper number of steps to break something into, it, it throws them for a loop because um, you could break it into infinite number of steps, anything, right? So what's the proper number of steps to break brushing your teeth into? Well, it's probably like four. Uh, get out get out your toothbrushing stuff. Put the toothpaste on the brush. You know, uh, brush your teeth. Rinse off the brush. Gargle and spit. Put everything away. Maybe like five steps. I don't know. The thing is... If um, if you ask a TE person, they they switch into this mode of thinking that is accustomed to the fact that exactly why we would choose this number of steps over that number of steps as the right number is a question that they don't question, right? So it's like they accept that there is a proper number of steps to break it into that if I if the if the task is light smoking a cigarette, it's get a cigarette, you know, put it in your mouth, light it, smoke it, put it out. So one, two, three, four, five steps. You could say it's find your pack of cigarettes, open your pack of cigarettes, pull a cigarette out of the pack, move the cigarette from the pack to your mouth. You could say all of those things as steps, but that's not really the proper number of steps. So there's no way to establish what proper is. It's not, it doesn't have a TI identity like that. And so that's why it's a good question to ask, I think, to get a, pe a person's sort of uh, sense of, of whether they accept, the, accept TE as it is or whether, they, uh, or whether they challenge the arbitrariness of it. So what Legends Fall says there seems arbitrary. It is arbitrary. 
I mean, I, I agree. That's the point. And TI types will note that it's arbitrary. Which type has the most difficulty to answer TI questions after EFP types? Um, well, uh, ENFJs and ESFJs. Usually, though, it's easy enough to tell that they're FE and not FI, so it's, uh, it's a mugity meow. Totally a mugity meow. Right, well, and another way of putting what Rain says there is that TI is, you could, you could talk about the functions kind of as, um, habits of ignoring certain aspects of things. So you could think of extroverted intuition as um, the habit of ignoring uh, determinant limiters or something like that. You, you could think of NI as the habit of ignoring your experience. You can think of SI as the habit of ignoring your observational truths when they conflict with your experience. You can think of TI as ignoring the, the gray underneath the black and white of language, you know? And FI is ignoring the black and white on top of the gray that lies underneath language. So it is the case that much of what we try to communicate about isn't really communicable meaningfully by a language, but... It's not the case that much of what we try to communicate about here isn't very communicable by a language. Uh, so it is possible to, if you focus purely on those aspects of life that are communicable, namely mostly mapping matters like we're talking about right now, then all of a sudden uh, you're more well suited to ignore the gray because the gray is much less present and much less significant in matters that are more removed from experience. Uh, I mean, at the, at the end of the day, the, the simplest and best um, distinction between TI and FI is a disinterested calculus or an interested calculus. And everything follows from that. Why, why is TI good at slash reflexively, why does it turn things into uh, uh, just their their most determinate black and white meanings or treat them as symbols or variables well it's because it's um, by in order to excise your own interest from the considerations you need to excise the gray because your own interest comprises much of that gray right <coughs> Is TI about fixing cars and being a mechanic? No. Although a TI person can fix cars and be mechanics, potentially. Um, well, for me, it's SI polar. But I mean, I agree, NI polar is quite shocking. When you see NI polar in action, a perfectly intelligent man coming up with these wackadoodle explanations for things. Or like my dad going watching a commercial and going, Well, I guess that must really be Aaron Rodgers' dog. Why do you guess that? Well, the answer is because he's seen on the commercial Aaron Rodgers with what appears to be his dog. Man, I think that my mom who's an ESTJ as well, likes, like, Hallmark movies because it's, like, the end is always predictable. It's always the same ending. So it's, like, there's nothing to, like... There's nothing complicated in the plot line that would make her think that it would go any different <laughs> from where it, the way it always does. It, they're such like I never understood those shows. 
It's like, there's... And I knew an ESFJ who liked Hallmark movies, too, for, like, the same reason, like, the happy ending. Like, what? <laughs> is that how you think that people meet? <laughs> like, that is not how people meet. Well, you know, I mean, my dad likes to watch movies he's already seen before. Mm. And also, he didn't want to see uh, that movie about Le Mans because he has his own memory and story that he didn't want the movie interfering with. He remembers it his way. He was there, you know, and he yeah. didn't. He didn't want to see the movie that was gonna contradict his memory at all. I guess I, I'm not sure. I think that's probably accurate. But let me explain why I, um, why SI Polar seems most shocking to me. It seems most shocking when you when this happens. When I ask like an ENTJ, if they don't know, if they're not coming in aware of how of how SI tests play out. Let's say they've never seen a typing session of mine or just maybe watched one of them or something. And I ask them, okay, what did you have for breakfast this morning? And they say, well, usually I have a bagel. Um, I say, okay, but what did you have this morning? Well, you know, usually it's just uh, coffee and bagel and then I'm out the door. Okay, but did you actually do that this morning? You mean, like, did I have a bagel, like, this morning? Yes. Did you actually have a bagel this morning? Oh, I mean, I don't remember what I had for breakfast. It's like, when you see that, it's pretty striking. It's like, not only do they not remember what they had for breakfast, they don't even, it takes them a while to grasp the concept that you're actually asking them to recall specifically what they had for breakfast this morning. That, to me, seems, like, crazy, you know? Obviously, T.I. Polar can be quite striking as well. The problem with T.I. Polar that, that makes it less striking than S.I. Polar is that people have T.I. attached to their ego, so they don't want to reveal their T.I. Polarness very much. As soon as you start asking T.I. questions, it seems like every T.I. Polar person, if you ask, begin asking a T.I. question, they begin scrambling to avoid those kind of questions before you, they even hear the end of the question. They encountered them enough in life that they know that this thing makes them look dumb according to other people. And so it's, it's a big challenge to get good displays of TI Polar and have the person be okay with me publishing it because they think it makes them look dumb. Is that polar SI or does inferior FI play into that too? Um, into what exactly? I'm not sure what you're what's exactly you're referring to. Do ESTJs only like happy endings because they are imposing a sign into the movie itself, or is it because so is it more so because the NI polar is overpowering? I don't know if my dad only likes happy endings. I think, in general, my dad doesn't like surprises that he's not responsible right. for. Right. Like, um... It's not so much that... I mean, my mom loves a happy ending, but, um... It's not so much about the happy ending that she likes in the shows. It's that it's a predictable ending. Um... Polar TE would not, may, may make people feel dumber. I don't know about that. But what it, it doesn't display as dumb. So, in other words, because TI can, approximates into a skills Hi, test TV. so neatly, and because that particular skills test correlates with certain kinds of questions that are thought of as IQ test questions and or uh, critical thinking kind of questions or whatever, um, the, uh, the TI polar people, it's possible to, you know, they're, when they, when they're being asked those kind of questions publicly or, you know, in front of people, it's, uh, impossible for them to hide their incapacity because the, the thing being tested is narrow and correlates so strongly with this, the actual attentional manner that it's definitive. But 
instead of the TE, what you'll see is you'll see somebody doing something in a very dumb way. <laughs> Rain, well, I mean, see, this is the advantage of, of me being and I ignoring, I think. I'm very accustomed to my dad ending perfectly reasonable discussions with the statement, well, Eric, you know how it is. You're an optimist. I'm a pessimist. I just go, okay, Dad. <laughs> it's like, the thing is, it's what's called a, a risk heuristic, and it's a kind, specific kind of cognitive fallacy or bias that afflicts most humanity, which is to say, if you inform people that there's a risk of something, people will account for that in their calculus of what to do and stuff, no matter how little information they have about that risk. So it could be 0.0000001%, but once they're informed about it, the reality of that risk takes on a scope that's much larger than the actuality of the risk because on the map, um, it's the same size as every other set of words that gets thrown at you, you know? Would any third in ESFJ be prone to daydreaming and be unaware of their surroundings? No. ESFJ third slot NE is very much like ESTJ third slot NE. They want to be the ones responsible for all the deviation from expected stuff. So it's like uh, they want to be the ones to say, surprise, we're going out to <laughs> this exciting thing on oh Wednesday God, night. Nuts. Right? But if you say to them, hey, um, what do you think about, about this fun idea that we could do together? They immediately go, no, no, listen, I've got, I've got meow on Saturday, I've got meow, no, just, I'm not, no. Because why? As soon as you mention it to them, you've immediately disrupted their SI planning for the next few days in which every time slot is accounted for either as committed to something or available for them to play with. So if you throw something out there, like if I say to my dad, uh, around the time a game starts, hey dad, you want to watch this game together? Ah, uh, son, no, 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 son, ah, uh, I'm, and what's he doing? He's like reading the paper or something. If I say to him, uh, hey dad, tomorrow there's this game on, would you like to watch it with me and Rachel? He'll say, no, 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 son, and then, Later say, you know what, son? Uh, I think, yeah, let's watch that game. <laughs> because it's far enough in the future that he's able to account for it and blah, 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 blah. Or he'll sometimes come and give a counter proposal. Well, why don't we watch this other game on this other day instead? Because he's just, that's just third slot in he. It's selfish. Like, here I am sitting right next to Rachel. How many words has Rachel said and how many words have I said? <laughs> any in the dominant slot can be a little selfish as well, I guess. You're fine. I don't really have much to say about... Serial killer means they're strategic or lucky enough not to get caught the first time. It would seem to imply as well um, a desire to kill that's unrelated to any specific, like, you, you, uh, you cheated on me with my brother. Like, that, that death isn't, uh, isn't the kind of murder that a serial killer does. So, serial killer, at least connotatively, right, that's true, Legends Fall. Uh, being an any dom means having a healthier relationship with extroverted intuition, ultimately, than um, having it in the third slot, but that's just the nature of having a configural imbalance, you know? Why are there so many sex bots in the internet? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, <laughs> That's a good question. I haven't seen many, at least. Because that's where what they eat grows? I don't know. Mm. Uh, right, yeah. So, in other words, I'm down. If somebody else has ideas, I'm totally down to do other people's ideas. That's part of being FB third as well, is 
you know, one of the ways in which Epi Third is selfish is it likes to be the generous one. It likes to be the one who's who's giving uh, on a matter rather than the one who's insisting. Um, at the same time, ESCPs and ENTPs don't really like to be at anybody's beck and call, so it's like you can't really rely on that. <laughs> um, so anyway, the whole point of this live stream, the reason it started at all, is because random person, as his name is, uh, left some comments on the typing of Grace, challenging her typing as an ISTP and saying that she's not an ISTP. It was annoying in part because that's a three hour long typing video and nothing in it does anything realistically but confirm that she's an ISTP. What does selfish mean to you? Well, like, I prefer this over a video conference room which can hold up to 100 people. I could be in the TWFP room right now mm -hmm. and everybody could be engaging with me there, coming on camera or mic as they see fit, and it could be just this mess of a... Go in and out. Mess of a cacophony of conversations, right? Um, but I prefer to be the only one talking. So that's FE third. You know, I want to be the center of attention. I want to be the one who's pontificating. Other people are learning from me, not me learning from them. One of the hardest things for an ENTP is to learn is to learn from other people. Once, once an ENTP gets that thing, gets the concept of that down, they're way better off than before they get the concept of that down. You're trying to type your mother is either ENFP or ESFJ when she contemplates she's unaware of her surroundings and she's able to feel others' emotions and tell if someone has bad intentions or not. And she also plans like ESFJ, so it's kind of hard to type her. Well, um, I mean, the TI Polar test, TI fourth versus TI Polar, they look very different. So if you want to see what TI fourth looks like, look at my typing session of Megan Lavota when I ask her TI questions. So... She gets out a pad of paper and a pencil and diligently writes it down. And it's a very easy question, okay? And then thinks through it very carefully and then very proudly says the answer. Um, and she's right. Now, it's the sort of question that an INTP would just go, pa, here's the answer. But she had, but she, she gets the idea of it. She gets the concept of it. She knows, oh, I'm okay. I'm going to do that thing that's kind of hard for me right now. I'm going to focus on this kind of thinking that uh, I usually like to ignore because um, I usually only like to use it as it suits my FE, right? But I'm ready. Whereas an ENFP or will avoid that question as much as possible. We'll avoid those CI questions. As soon as you start asking them, they might say, where are you going with this? Or they might be like, I, I, you know I hate those kind of things. Or something like that. Um, if you do get them to actually answer it, and you say, you give them a very straightforward TI question, like, who is my mother's mother in relation to me? Even something that simple, there's a decent chance they'll go like, ah, you wait, ah. You know? Hmm. That's, and how powerful, how convincing is that about the fact that there's some sort of cognitive function thing going on here. Because the other alternative is is just complete bullshit. It's that this person, this ENFP person, is just like me, except they lack logic. In other words, they're just really weak at something I'm very strong at. And there's no corresponding trade-off, right? It's just no. like... Um, well, the difference between you and an ENFP, Eric, is that you're a lot smarter than they are. So, okay, that's the part that's easy to test, maybe, what, you, what you're looking at there, the TI thing. But there's a corresponding strength to having an FI tool. And if we don't evaluate psychology through cognitive functions, then we have no choice but to dismiss everybody who's TI polar as being the same as everybody else, except just incredibly demonstrably retarded in this one area. So that's why we have things like people getting diagnosed with learning disabilities just because they've got meow in their polar. <laughs> uh, 
Well, fairness versus kindness is uh, is an example of um, there's there's uh, several people who who commit the same rule infraction at school. Um, two of them are are very successful, popular kids who who are always we're always pushing the boundaries and one of them is cancer boy who's who has been who's been enlisted by the two these two bullies and who's who's clearly a hapless victim here and so fairness would require you to give the same punishment to all of them uh, because after all they each committed the same infraction but kindness would say let's mitigate the punishment for the one who's Who's less guilty on on a uh, on a gray level, <laughs> you know? Which poll is the most hilarious? I mean, I find uh, I actually find Fi polar pretty hilarious <laughs> uh, because when you watch this, uh, if you watch the video that's coming out tomorrow morning with this guy. What's his name? It was an INTP that I talked to. Tim. Um, there's a lot of good FI polar humor in there. <laughs> <laughs> Funny story. T.I. Dom sees the world the way the world sees T.I. Polar. <laughs> well, I mean, look. It is true that the world is an illogical place where people rarely justify themselves adequately or expect to have a satisfactory set of words before undertaking a given course of action. But, you know, on the plus side, we can chat about it. <laughs> we do. How can you overcome your SE inferior? Um... You, you you know better than I. You're the TI tool, TE tool user. Okay. Here's the obstacle course. <laughs> did you get these candies? Yeah, I did. Thank you. <laughs> um, well, Michael, BN, it sounds then like you're doing an ENFP, not an, not an ESFJ. I have, I don't really get SE very well. Uh, you know, I understand that it's it's necessarily the counterpoint to to intuiting. Like we could spend all day intuiting about what we should do, what we could do, how things ought to be, how things are, how the status quo is wrong, and all a bunch of other kind of shit that we do all the time. But that means that we're not actually doing anything, right? <laughs> it's the alternative to doing things. So, uh, obviously, for me, I had to do some SE before we started this live stream. It's, it's the part I don't like, the pain in the ass part, where I have to set up the OBS, I have to make a new thumbnail, I gotta make a new title... I got it. Meow the meow and meow the mew, you know? And it's a pain in the ass. Because, not because it's difficult, but just because it's a bunch of steps I got to complete. Well, I don't like that. That's SE. But I have to do it. But note, for the 10 minutes or whatever of SE I have to do, then I can any for a long time. You know what I'm saying? It's like a little bit of SE goes a long way in terms of generating opportunity to any. Do I consider paying attention to what your eyes are observing SE? Uh, well, in, in some sort of machine code form, yes. In other words, let's say I'm going to, I'm choosing right now to begin extrovertedly intuiting about something. Some, let's say it's uh, tango 
I just take a word from Winston's mom's comment there, tango. You want me to extrovertedly intuit about tango? Well, I could look around the room to gather ideas from the physical space. Okay, so in that regard, I'm using kind of machine code SE, looking around to see what opportunities are present in real time in the physical space. It's just that I'm not using them opportunistically to do anything except use the name of them to build something off of. So if I were going to be talking about Tango and I see a little toilet over there, I might say this is a story about the conflict in the military over how to represent the letter T in military word symbols. Uh, General MacArthur really wanted to be Tango and General Williamston, who you never really remember anymore, he wanted the word to be toilet. And uh, there was a big, a big conflict within the Pentagon over it for years and years until finally Wellington mysteriously died one night when he was babysitting MacArthur's uh, granddaughter. Now, the CIA delivered a report to then-sitting President Theodore Roosevelt indicating that it was, in fact, the granddaughter who had poisoned the general in an attempt to end this dispute once and for all, having heard way too much about it, you know. It's like every dinner. Tango toilet, toilet, tango, tango toilet. Uh, but, you know, the reality is, officially, the case was never resolved, and today we've entirely forgotten about Willington, and we still remember MacArthur because of his famous I'll be back, I'll be back later speech about the Philippines. You may remember that one. See, I'll see you later, guys, or um, catch on flip-flop, I think is what it said, something like that. Right. So, Mrs. Mom, did you know, you're an ex-military person. Did you know that, that true historical story about about the the big debate back in the day in Theodore Roosevelt's time over whether they should use the the word toilet or tango for tea? Do they teach that in military school? <laughs> Wherever you go when you go to the military, <laughs> I guess if you're not an officer, you just go to basic training. Do ENFPs like fashion because she has a sense of style, but I've read that's an SE thing. That's just so dumb. It's an SE thing. It's not an SE thing to have a sense of fashion. It's an FE thing to have a sense of fashion. Now, if she's demonstrative FE, you're going to see her try to express via fashion, expect the world to expect her to be expressing via fashion, but you may find her expression to be demonstrative of a fashion sense, but you might not think she has very good fashion sense. But unique, personal to her or something, you know. <sighs> ah. Yeah, I think Winston Churchill was involved in that as well. He was he was recommending they represent the letter T with the words with the letters W C because that's how they say toilet in England. And everybody said that would be way too confusing. That's shortly before he gave uh, his speech about we're going to fight him over there and over here and over here and in that place and this place. Really famous speech. Nintendo themed shoes. I sh you know, the classic ENFP is a tie-dye shirt that says vegan AF on it. That's your classic textbook ENFP shirt. Um, they're middle fingering, but also showing that, that they're middle fingering from the right team against <laughs> the right team, you know? Whatever that means. The clan still tried to leave messages. <laughs> They'd call the, the technical training school. Uh, hi, is this the, uh, oh, it's the answer machine. Okay, leave a message. Hi, this is the clan. Um. We have we have negative things to say about people of given skin color and stuff. Uh, <laughs> we want to schedule a meeting to discuss these important matters with you. <laughs> Goodbye, like that. Um, you don't care what one person considers kindness to be. Man, well, it's like uh, you know, I might have a general rule that I apply around here regarding uh, timing people out or hiding them or something. 
but I might not apply, apply it uniformly because I might sense that maybe somebody's having a really bad day and doesn't, you know, even though they're kind of being a dick, they don't really need me to pile on at this moment or something. That would be an FI decision on my part, and it, I can't exactly think of an example of me doing that, but, um, you know, if I were to do that, then uh, that wouldn't be a bad thing to do. It would be kinder and less fair. There, There is certainly the case where um, I've had, for example, Leaf Trimmer on occasion hammer me for being unfair because I was, I was not treating the same behavior in the same fashion, but I said, well, you know, I'm not really being unfair. You're trying to, to ignore bigger picture considerations and meow de meow, you know. You're going to orbit forever? That must be a perfect orbit, totally non-degrading. If your orbit's degrading, that means eventually you're going to crash into the thing that you're a satellite of. I know. Yeah. Or, or could it also mean you're going to eventually fall away from it? I don't know. I don't know if they use the same word for both, for both directions. How many of you here would like to take a flying saucer to outer space right now? I mean, of course. I'm flying only by flying saucers. Yeah, well, it's only a three-hour trip. If we just go to Jupiter, we're going to go dive our flying saucer in the red, the big red Ooh. spot, and then we'll come back. Okay. It'll be three hours. Hopefully it doesn't turn three out hours. like Gilligan Island. If it turns out like Gilligan's Island, then we're going to have to live on Jupiter <laughs> until we get rescued. Hopefully the professor will be with us so he can use shortwave radio. Yeah, hopefully. Well, I mean, that's that's true of ENFPs. She really doesn't care what people think of her. Um, just like I have so much trouble caring about TE. You know, I have so much trouble caring about what's... There's this song that is on my playlist. says something like, somebody gave me good advice about how to get rich. Or somebody, somebody, told, somebody explained to me how to get rich and I just spit on that good advice. You know, and I thought, when I heard it, I'm like, oh, I thought this band was INFJ. Now I think so even more. But it's something ENFPs have in common because six slot TE is countervalued. Well, you know what? You actually don't spin around in a circle when you ride on a flying saucer. The outside of the saucer spins. Oh, that's so cool. But the inside I'm of the spa. more and more into this flying saucer idea. The inside of the saucer stays stable. It's like it's like a, a meow floating on water inside, and the thing spinning around outside. <laughs> How comfortable! I asked the essay question because there seems to be blurriness in the distinction between external physical and internal physical. What makes the sensation of pain more internal than a sound I hear? Um, well, I mean, one one test you can use is that other people can hear the same sound, and you can test that with an independent observer asking both parties what word somebody spoke, for example. Uh, in contrast, if you take two people and uh, you injure only one of them, uh, only one of them is going to be able to tell you anything about where the pain is. So, like, if you imagine a wall here and a guy standing on either side, this person here shouts one word they both can hear it this person shoots one person with an arrow the other person can't see where he got shot he's not going to be able to tell you anything about what the pain is but intentionally what differentiates them i mean the thing is uh feelings the, the feelings you experience with your body are are fundamentally ways of knowing your well-being as a biological entity if i feel hungry it's knowing that my well-being as a biological entity is contingent upon eating something. So, SI in that regard is a knowledge um, function because every piece of information you get from your body has some meaningful place, potentially, in your ontology. 
Where it's not the case with the external world. Every piece of data you get from the external world, the vast majority of them don't enter your attentional frame of reference at all. So, um, the, the answer is extroverted sensing is not a knowledge function. It's an, it's an exploration function to the extent that it's about sensing stuff. You know, you're opportunistically seeking with your eyes rather than, um, rather than knowing with your body. shower, but I'm procrastinating. I really don't want to. Um, no, absolutely not, Skygear. Uh, so, uh, for example, um, I sneezed a lot this morning. I had a sneezing fit this morning. And so this is this is critically important to understand that what Skygear says here, this attempt to conflate two things into one is absolutely garbage. Okay, so don't pay any attention to what Skygear is saying as legitimate. Let's explain why it's totally illegitimate. He says the sound has an effect on the internal physical, and the arrow comes from the external physical. Both are essentially the same in regards to the object. No, they're not. Absolutely not. So not all sounds have an impact on the internal physical. Just because the medium by which they enter into one's consciousness is uh, physical doesn't mean they all all sounds enter into your consciousness. So, in other words, um, how much how much of a given kind of data enters into your consciousness is going to be relevant to where something is in the stack, right? I there's. A lot of things in my field of vision here, from rustling leaves to birds to sky to a satellite dish thing to a roof to wires, etc. I'm able to note them all now because I'm opportunistically using my expert sensing to demonstrate a point about the distinction, the fundamental distinction between things that are outside of you and things that are inside of you. Um, if my stomach started hurting right now, it would presumably be caused by something such as my poop gathering up or me eating something bad or whatever, but it, it would nevertheless be a fundamentally different experiential relationship than I have with those wires outside that I can see. So let's not try to mush out what doesn't deserve to be mushed at all. There's nothing mushy about the distinction between the external and internal uh, physical fields. Nothing mushy at all. Um, like, I just burped a little bit, right? And attentionally, it wasn't, wouldn't have been worth my attention, except that I'm trying to demonstrate something that I know rather than observe. You might say, well, it doesn't observation precede knowing. Well, sure. But uh, when I observe something external to me, I know what it is within I, right? When I experience something physically, I know what it is with SI. And it's a fundamentally different kind of attentional process, right? One thing is fixated on identity. The other thing, one thing begins with identity. The other thing begins with experience. Too bad your crops aren't all cactuses, Sheila. Then you wouldn't have to worry about that. Maybe next season you should plant a... Where's your example? Let me see. I didn't see your example. No, your example was about sound. I did address it. I addressed it very directly. All right. But I can pay attention to my sight and my hearing simultaneously where I remember you saying simultaneous attention can only be done with different attentional fields. That would imply that there are, the two are on different fields. No. Um, 
I would say that sight and hearing are both as are both components of extroverted sensing when you're attending by those things. So if you want to put yourself in a pure extroverted sensing state of being, stand somewhere in the wilderness and you know, pretend like you're being hunted in the most dangerous game, okay? And you're still, and you're listening with incredible intensity for any sound that might in, give you any cue about anything. For any sight of, of rustling somewhere that might give you a cue. And you're, you're in a state of, of S-E-N-I observation, okay? So you're looking for things you can meaningfully know about in real time in the external world. That's how you would put yourself in an SE state of being. Now, what you have to ignore then, in order to be entirely in an SE state of being, is how you feel at the moment. If you're listening to your heart beating, or if you're paying attention to the fact that your feet hurt, or you're tending to a cut on your knee, then you are not paying attention to everything outside of you. And so it's important to remember that all of these functions are expressions of what you're not doing as much as they're expressions of what you are doing. And those two things are definitely distinct. Now, somebody who's an SE DOM or an SI DOM is gonna be quite effective at utilizing the two in conjunction with each other. So, for example, an SI DOM might be very good at telling how much energy they have left to expend in a given sporting event, where they need to save their energy. For example, playing soccer, soccer players are not always running all out all the time. Presumably the best at managing their energy preservation throughout the course of the game, so they still have energy left at the end, would be your SI DOMs. Concurrently, however, the SE DOMs are going to instinctually know basically what they're capable of. Can I get to that ball and kick it into the into the goal or not? Um, that's, that's an NI kind of knowing about that links to SI as well. They understand their SI in that sense as capacity to... Uh, to impact in the real-time physical world. And it's a different frame of reference, you know? So, hopefully that clarifies the distinction. So, it, yes, is it is it possible to, is it, is it sort of impossible to completely isolate a function and say, um, this function is precisely this to the exclusion of all other things? Of course it is, because the nature of cognitive functions is one of um, mechanical relations that to, to be a TI tool user is to almost never willfully utilize your own interests in coming to status decisions and to be really at, at a loss when circumstances um, attack you in that area, as I was when I was with Kimberly, right? These things are definitionally linked, but they're they're definitionally linked because they're mechanically linked. Let's see here. But why is it NI receiving when I'm infiltrating enemy territory rather than SI? I'm not receiving intuitive truth in that example, but et cetera, et cetera. Well, what you're saying is, um, is what, what do the things that I'm observing in real time mean in real time? So NI is, at its machine code level, being able to see a tree in front of you and recognize it as a tree and note that you can't walk through it. It's not viscous in that fashion. Um, that's all part of machine code level NI. You don't have to do it sort of explicitly. It's just part of what it means to know the identity of things. Uh... Um... So, if, if I'm an SI person, and every time I've been in the jungle, in the forest before, and I've heard a rustling like meow, 
it's been a deer, then even if the circumstances are such that I need to be watching out for wrestling meaning something different, I'll be inclined naturally to uh, underestimate the threat of a given sound unless I've experienced that sound linking to a threat before. Uh, an example of being an SI person who can sometimes be really kind of NI dumb is when I started going out with Rachel, she informed me uh, that she was, had bipolar and stuff. And because I never experienced any anybody with those things, it didn't. I just didn't think anything about it. I was just like, well, that's just whatever. That's just one of those labels that people have. Um, I don't believe things, even if I should, until I experience them myself, right? Uh, so one, one thing a person could possibly learn from cognitive functions is something like that. Uh, I, I could learn that, hey, Eric, when people tell you about things that you don't know about, don't assume they're insignificant. You should, you should maybe uh, trust other people's perspective on things a little bit more sometimes rather than having to validate everything for yourself all the time, you know? Who is my favorite character in Naruto Shippuden? I mean... I like... Uh, I like... What's his name? Konkuro? The puppet guy from from the, the sand? I like him a lot. He's got cool abilities. He's got a cool little face paint thing going on. He carries himself in a very cool fashion. There's some sort of inverse link with autism and NI then, since with severe autism, people can't abstract from a picture of a stick man and recognize that it represents a person. It's like zero NI, no? Um, well, autism, I think, correlates with, if anything, polar FE. Now, if it, if it were to be the case that it's polar FE, then you'd see two distinct expressions of it. One in which you're talking about there where it's a failure to make meanings that are universal out of examples that are particular. But another is the SI weakness. So that's why you'll see some autistic people going like this because they're stimming or like this. You know, they like the feeling of it or whatever. Um, so what I do all the time, bouncing my knees, um, smoking, going like this, blah, 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 blah. this is just a, this is stimming, as they call it when autistic people do that. This is stimming that is within the normal, considered to be the normal range of behavior. I'm doing the same thing that autistic people are doing. But I'm doing it because my SI is fourth, so it's not so overwhelming. The key thing to remember about autism, though, is that ultimately, while it would seem to link more with FE polar than anything else, it doesn't really link with cognitive functions. Because there's no such thing as autism spectrum. If you have genuine autism, you it, in, it includes a component of mental retardation. If you do not have genuine autism, then your cognitive function stack has been pathologized and you've been told your autism spectrum because your FE is not good. Now, fortunately, society is only stupid in some ways and not others. So in other words, it doesn't misinterpret my stemming behavior as autism. It misinterprets it as attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. So um, even though both the stimming and the FE polarishness are qualities that, that display in autistic people, neither of them has anything to do really with autism because autism, as I've said, when correctly understood, necessarily includes a component of mental retardation. And if you are, don't have that, then pathologizing you is the wrong thing. There's nothing wrong with you just because you don't share FE values like some other people do, you know? Um, if there's not, in other words, if there's nothing actually wrong with you, you don't have a mental retardation component, then you don't have a problem. You're not suffering from a pathology. You're just a normal variation of human that has been pathologized because psychology assumes people are one kind of thing and individuals deviate from that single, single mean. 
Whereas in reality, people are 16 different kinds of things. So, of course, psychology is completely buttfuck wrong about everything. Tempo Grandin Schmimple Pandin. That's what I say. Do you really say that, Eric? Yes, I say it every day. I say Temple Grandin, Schmimple Pandin. And I'm I mean it when I say it too. I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm seriously serious. Eric, what is right in society? This? I mean, society's the best it's ever been. Uh there's more capacity for people to honestly communicate with each other and meaningfully engage in discourse than there's ever been. There's more access, democratic access to the means of production on the metaphysical plane than there's ever been. We've, we've achieved something equivalent to uh, communism on the metaphysical plane. Because of the lack of physicality, the workers own the means of production, so to speak. Now, it turns out that's not such a spectacularly great thing as one might have hoped, but... Uh, The reason it's possible is because of the absence of physical space limitations. So I can do this, and shit tons of other people can be live streaming at the same time, all in the same space, and we don't have to take turns, right? Yeah, Peter wants some food. What does this bomb knows what that sounds like, huh? Uh, may I just say also, Winston Bomb? Thank you very much for the drum. I haven't gotten to play with it really yet, but um, it's fantastic. I plan to play with it. I, uh, it's... It's incredibly useful, potentially. There you go. There's your food. Now eat it and hush. Silly bird. It's like, you're a bird. Why are you so big? <laughs> that's what I say to, uh, that's what I say to peacocks. Hey, you're a bird. Why are you so big? Usually, they get the hint. What? What's the hint? They're too big to be birds. She was the lady who helped decide how to name each of those letters. Alpha, Foxtrot, all those things. That was her job. <laughs> she was the letter namer. This is some folk call me a rambling man. I'm doing a lot of fun and kicking games. And I'm going to do an answer good call me names. My daddy was a wheelie wood, oh, I wasn't born and raised in no ghetto, just a white boy looking for a place to do my thing. I don't want no handout living, don't want any part of anything they give, and I'm proud of my night out a song to sing. Well, I said a few things, and I'll admit it, if you want to get along, you better home than getting it all. Oh, no, 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 no. Find me a wealthy woman in a line of work that don't take no diploma because I ain't got much to lose but lives to gain. You might call me a good time fella, but I ain't no black and I ain't no yellow, just a white boy looking for a place to do my thing. Yeah, I don't want no handout living, don't want any part of anything they giving. I'm proud of mine and I got a sign to sing. Well, I said a few things and I'll admit it. If you want to get up on your own bank, get it. Just a white boy looking for a place to do my thing. Small town boy been around a little and I like guitar and I like the fiddle and that's the kind of soul to can fan my flame. Blue white billy feared and ready, I got to work just to be somebody, just a white boy looking for a place to do my thing. I don't want no handout living, don't want any part of anything they give giving, I'm proud of mine, I got a sign to sing. Well I said a few things and I'll admit it, if you want to get ahead you got to hump and get it, just a white boy looking for a place to do my thing. Yeah, I said a few things and I'll admit it. If you want to get ahead, you got to hump and get it. Just a white boy looking for a place to do my thing.
cover art? No, not really. I don't think so. Daughter's Day to you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I posted, I know you don't have Instagram, but I posted on my Instagram story a picture of you and, oh, well, you and me when I was young, and then you, me, and Granddaddy from Hawaii. And um, I put the caption that I'm your favorite child and I'm Granddaddy's favorite grandchild. So I'm hoping people, people don't know that I'm an only child and they just think I'm just speaking facts. Right. Well, you are speaking facts. You're an only child and an only grandchild. Um, but the favorite is what I'm saying. Oh, absolutely. You're the favorite. How could you be anything yeah. but? You're, even if you weren't the only, you'd still be the favorite. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> that's, why, that's why there's just absolutely no point in, um, in having any more children after I had you. It's like, well, yeah. every, every other child is going to be a disappointment comparatively. You're welcome, darling. Um, um, when you get here, can okay, you hook, okay. can you hook a trigger warning up a little bit? Yeah, let me make sure I have some. I'm sure I do. Okay. But, um, I have... All right. Well, I'll see you when you get here. Okay. I love you. Okay. Well, I love you too. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. I. Uh, that's my daughter, Delilah. She's a special lady. She, I, I spent the money, I sent her to special lady school for seven years, and she learned a lot of special lady techniques there, like how to be a special lady, and being a special lady, and being an extremely special lady. Those are some of the things she learned there. This song goes out to Boba Fett. I don't know if he's listening, but if you're out there listening in Radio Land, Boba Fett, this one goes out to you. When I was younger, it seemed that everything gleamed. I don't know what happened to me, but I've lost that sense of urgency, and I don't think that I'll ever see it again. If you follow my lead, you'll discover I'm louster than you. And you'll want to know the way to get back out to wherever it was you thought you knew. And tomorrow will be just like today. I'll be lost then too. It's a matter of mood A 
as much as a matter of will And the things I do and the direction I point to Still seem a part of me Though departedly And I wonder if I'll ever see them again why did you play that one for Boba Fett, Eric? Well, because he left a comment the other day saying he liked the song. That's why. Telling me it was my best song. I love it when people insist on putting things that way, you know? Uh, Sammy has a story that need be told And this is a song for an open road Such a thing must always do its job Married up Jeb, turned 19 Four years in and three kids we Weary now and questioning the path Agency out Faces discretion Locking in our courses Way too young Urgency conferred is really just depression Making sure those underneath them always run A duck at 20 thought bourbon fun And likewise duck at 21 and so forth Well up into middle age What once had seemed to set him free Became his whole identity Now Doug's about another drunken rage out base discretion locking in our courses way too dumb the urgency conferred is really just depression offer you incentives but they haven't got a thing that's fun everybody's panicked out the kids lock them up with extra dexedrine Mathematics to produce success Or impose more unjust duress Agency outpaced his discretion Locking in our courses Way too young The urgency conferred is really just depression Making sure those underneath them always Without consent, it's really just oppression By parasites surviving on their wages earned by lying While they feed the fear of dying Yeah, let's feed upon the futures of the young Hmm, that was nice Pleasant. Mm, let's see. Oh, he came here with her. And what's the big problem that you can't endure? You seem so sure it's not appropriate claiming to blame things on Scott. Despite getting caught, he's got you refraining for him, straining for him, going to the gym to make yourself good enough again. Oh, he came here with her, and what's
What's the big problem that you can't endure? You seem so sure it's not appropriate claiming to blame things on Scott. Despite getting caught, he's got you reframing for him, straining for him, going to the gym to make yourself good and up again. Be done with them. That's a pretty good song. Cool. Play this one next. Let me make this ninety. We are full screen. Yeah. Because the city of Bonn has fallen into a sinkhole again. You're living on a time frame I will never know. Alienation and humanity's soul. Imagine you a future after the collapse, returning to the urgency of isolated past. Picturing community free of metaphysics where you're hunting buffalo, picking red delicious and the knowledge of the seasons and the wisdoms of old. Fires blazing in the night to keep away the cold. Hostility is kept at bay. But what you think is in the way of life as children of the land. With Gavi weatherman Imagining a history that never could have been You lecture at the college, advancement is a sin Lamenting disconnection and every corporate act Asserting all your feelings and ignoring all the facts Hostility is kept at bay By what you think is in the way as children of the land with an agave weatherman you find modernity just so banal wish you had been born any time but now and your experience won't run afoul of exceptions you might allow Visualize nobility, sipping on some port, or tribes of peaceful savages and beautiful comport. But few of history's people ever thusly did cavort, cause life was solitary, nasty, brutish, poor, and short. Hostility is kept to bay, hostility is kept to bay, by what you think is in the way, what you think is in the way of life as children of the land. With an agave weatherman With an agave weatherman Except for fucking at the very end of it, it was fine, I suppose. Alright, I'm gonna play uh, two more songs. I'm gonna play Brooding, and I'm gonna play Puck Tart Lemon Squeeze, and I'm gonna call it a, a stream. Here we go. <laughs> Just brooding here won't do any good But brooding's more and more my style I seek the cheery ways of standing where we stood Cause I've been stuck here a while That's despite our natural selfishness That makes it easy to have fun but flutters in the gut become a fist as all my visions come undone. I tried to stream, distract, and dream the afternoon away, but heavy new realities bear down on every day, and for a bit I am out of it. Present still unsaid, but still I need it out of me. Five, six, seven, eight. 
It seems like everybody's so sensitive And ready to just get mad I seek the civil ways of living like a kid Cause who wants to be the dad? Have we lost our sense of scope and scale? Our capacity to laugh? The sense to know when not to wail And how to tip the golden calf? out of me what's inside my head and still I'm sad so sad for me sad for her unhappily and what you call sorrow I call home blues that sink clear down to the bone down to the bone still I'm sad so sad for me sad for her Thank you, thank you. That was my second to last song uh, for the day. I'm going to play Poker Tart Lemon Squeeze last. Um, let me meow this meow. Let me meow this to meow. And then I'm going to go ahead and put it back on the meow. That's per meow. And there we go. Okay. <clears throat> guy that you will see. Yes, he wants to be your friend, but he comes from around the bend, and it'll be a while till he sees you again. He's Pucker Tart Lemon Squeeze, he's a friend to you and me. He's International Delight's favorite go-to right-hand guy. He's international like him, but he's also busy like his friend, the beaver bee. Busiest creature, busy as a bee, busy as a beaver, and so much busier than Pucker Tart Lemon Squeeze. Well, he's Pucker Tart Lemon Squeeze. shabba doo ba 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 doo da Pucker Tart Lemon Squeeze. shabba doo ba day Pucker Tart Lemon Squeeze. shabba doo ba 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 doo da Pucker Tart Lemon Squeeze. shabba doo ba day And if you go to visit him for starts, remember to bring some sour or tart. He's not a fan of sugary treats because he's pucker tart and not pucker sweet. Well, he's pucker tart, lemon squeeze, the friendliest guy that you will see. Yes, he wants to be your friend, but he comes from around the bend, so it will be a while till he sees you again. Pucker Tart Lemon Squeeze, he's a friend to you and me. He's International Delight's favorite go-to right-hand guy. He's international like him, and he's also busy like his friend. The beaver bee, busiest creature, busy as a bee, busy as a beaver, and so much busier than Pucker Tart Lemon Squeeze. Pucker Tart Lemon Squeeze, shabba doo ba 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 doo da Pucker Tart Lemon Squeeze, shabba doo ba day yes, he's Pucker Tart Lemon Squeeze. I don't really have the arrangement of it down quite yet, but something like that. All right, everybody. I would like to personally thank each of every one of you for being here. Thank you, 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 and you. Probably is everybody. Probably like eight or nine, I would guess. So uh, you each deserve my resounding thank yous and this brief thank you song thank you <laughs> I told you it was brief alright thanks for being here talk to you later
Happy Father's Day, etc. Thanks, I